Well, BP has actually made the claim through one of their spokesmen that there is no such a thing as an industry standard. This is nonsense. There are standard industry practices that have been published by a number of people and some of the things that BP has done really fall out that envelope. There were, there were warning signs that were ignored by BP, any of which, uh, had they been addressed, could have, could have uh, prevented uh, this accident from happening. Yeah, as far as the commission and the panel that's investigating the accident, you know, and especially prior to implementation of any uh, policy or regulatory changes, I think looking and understanding the drilling environment, the operating uh, environment that the offshore industry is working in, that those people in those committees need to have an understanding of the safety issues and the technical issues uh, that the industry faces. Let me then describe the whole process of a blowout and how that may have happened in BP's case. Before you cement a well, the well is of course filled with a drilling fluid, which in the vernacular we call it a drilling mud. The purpose of the drilling mud is to exercise enough hydraulic, hydrostatic pressure, natural gas, it will influx into either the drilling fluid or even the cement itself. The reason that it will do is, of course, if somehow the pressure of the fluids become under balance. That means that more and more gas will start coming in, and the only way to handle that under normal circumstances is once you detect this, is to circulate it out by exercising a back pressure, that is we provide a mechanical pressure through the pumping units on the top so that we pressurize it down, circulate the fluid out, and then replace the fluid with the appropriate drilling mud density so that it on its own exercise sufficient pressure to prevent the involuntary flow of fluids from the reservoir into the well. If you don't do that, all hell breaks loose. BP failed to do that, and that was a very serious, I believe, infraction. Simply, they failed to circulate the drilling mud to the surface. The, the cementing is, is, is crucial in the sense that uh, in order to have a cement job with uh, integrity, uh, you need to get a, you need to allow the cement time to cure, uh, need, or set up. Uh, to re reach its compressive strengths, uh, to show that the cement is not contaminated, to show that it uh, has not been impacted either by uh, gas or water influx uh, to do that. BP ignored several of these signs during the cementing operation, and in particular, they, they did not realize that their cementing was likely to fail because of a series of problems that happened during the actual cementing operation. Uh, centralizers were crucial in um, making sure the pipe is properly centered in the hole. Think of it like a styrofoam packing where you are packing a box uh, with something valuable in there. And of course, in the BP case, the Halliburton program, which is a standard program in the industry, suggested 21 centralizers. The uh, recommendation by the cementer was 21 centralizers to use. I think uh, British Petroleum ended up using six centralizers. For reasons that I don't understand, the 21 centralizers were not on location. They, rep they had only six. They decided to go ahead and use the six. Apparently, in, this, in BP's case, the BP engineer did not want to wait for the centralizers to show up. He decided to go ahead. He was backed by a yet another engineer in BP who said, let's go ahead and do that. We are still gonna get a good cement job. Another problem that is an age old problem and it became quite transparent in the BP case is the length of the casings that are gonna be cemented. In the most conservative approach, a well looks like an old pirate 
telescope. In other words, you start from a very large size pipe in the, on the surface, then you replace it, you cement that in place, then you drill another hole inside it to another depth, you cement that all the way to the surface, you continue that with a third pipe, all the way again to the surface and so on. So it becomes a, a continuous telescoping kind of a well construction where the casing, all casing comes to the surface, all drilling mud comes to the surface, and all cement sheath comes to the surface. You know, using shorter casings, and especially casings that are cemented all the way to the surface, adds several degrees of assurance. That is, if one sheath fails, the next one, of course, will hold, okay? Whereas the way this was done is that they used successive pieces of long casings that would not come all the way to the surface, and then the final casing was a casing that was not cemented all the way to the top at all. So it was a bare pipe essentially inside a number of intermittently cemented casings. The regulatory records show that BP has been fined considerably in spite of the numerous violations and uh, millions upon millions of dollars in fines that the violations continue. And so is that a cost of doing business or is that a calculation that, that's part of it? When your safety practices result in other than just fines, when your safety practices get so dangerous that human lives are lost and not only lost once but lost repeatedly, then at what point does that carelessness and failure to adhere to safety regulations which are there for a purpose, at what point does that cost of business become excessive? We don't need to look at human lives as having a price on them and being expendable uh, when it comes to safety um, practices in our industry. Enforcement should be str uh, very strict and very harsh. Uh, that those who are abiding by the rules, they shouldn't be punished. We have more than adequate rules. When you have companies that continually disobey the rules or disregard them, and look at it from an economic perspective of just doing business, it creates a, a problem for the entire industry. And I think in this case is what we're looking at. When you see problems, the best thing to do is address that problem, not leave it to chance. And when you compromise the integrity of a whale bore, then you're placing everything in jeopardy.